Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sessions with Kat. So this video is not live today because, well, one, my hair ain't done and I don't feel like doing it yet. And two, um, I wanted to go through these cards and it's easier if it's like pre-recorded. I don't know. It's just easier this way. But we're still going to talk about navigating grief. We are on week six. So we got one more week left of all of this. Um, any questions that you have, you can message me. You can put them in the comments. Uh, and I will gladly answer them. Uh, so, you know, don't worry. And I'm not even sure if I want to make this a premiere video or not. But if it is a premiere video, I will be in the comment section with you guys so you can ask away that way as well so i don't know you guys will know here shortly after i'm done recording but let's get into it because like we went through we went through some stuff right week one shock and confusion week two sadness week three anger week four lost and confused right so not you're not just shocked and confused you're not lost and confused which is they feel totally different from one another and then we battled hysteria right and now we're on week six which is emptiness or the void and uh, i don't know what's worse going through the first five steps or this step okay um because it's not loneliness and it's not so much feeling alone it's feeling empty like depleted of something that's like the best way i can describe that and i want to make sure that i get these in frame so um i ordered these cards from the goddess provision box if i'm correct or goddessprovisions.com or something like that i will put it in the description box um it's like the whole like collection of these cards so they're like little little packs and you put them all together to make your own deck and i will be using this for like energy work but i wanted you guys to see the cards so um there's some major arcana there's the zodiac the chakras crystals um what else there's there's a few things in here but you'll see it as we go through it and i'm just praying that i'm in the frame there we go um so let's talk let's chit chat right the emptiness um the void it's after the chaos it's after the dust settles right um like if you've ever you know seen a volcano or anything like that on tv or in person i mean i don't know your journey what you've been through and you've you see the eruption right you see the lava and you know all the ash in the air it's after that right when everything settles and you now have to regroup rehome yourself right um it's a you know a what do i do now again right because after hysteria you kind of come back to life and you're like shit what do i do now right and you're feeling open and vulnerable now for those of you who ended a relationship, so if you if you ended a relationship and you're at the point you're at now, this is usually the point where there's some idiot that comes in and tries to, you know, save the day because you're vulnerable, right? And they think they can take advantage of you, right? Um, and I say idiot be, for all the right reasons, because they literally are, you know, well, maybe I shouldn't use idiot. That's too harsh. And I haven't had coffee yet, so in my mind, that's not too harsh. But um, <laughs> I think 
someone who doesn't have the right intentions comes in and you you feel like a sense of relief but at the same time you feel a sense of they're still being a hole and it's not being filled. I, that, that's the best way I can describe it. And when that person comes in, and this can be man, woman, whatever. When that person comes in, they're doing more damage than they are doing healing. And you might see them in one light and they might see you in another. And it, it, shit, communication just gets all kinds of... 50, 50 waves uh, fucked up. I hope that makes sense. And this is the point where your intuition is trying to kick back in. But it can't because you feel homeless. You feel this void. You feel like there's nothing there, right? And you're trying to fill this this vo void that actually doesn't exist that's why all the steps kind of end up mashing together because the void actually doesn't exist that that void is just something we've kind of conjured up in our mind you're not missing anything you're just as whole as you need to be it's just some parts require um some maintenance that's it right and you're going to find yourself making a lot of mistakes in this stage because you're not you're not as strong intuitive, intuitively as you were prior to the you know the trauma, right? Um how long does this stage last? As long as you want to feel this way. And that's the God's honest truth. Um if you want to hold that type of space it will last as long as you need it to right because you'll find yourself going oh i'm getting all this attention i'm getting all this love let me stay this way but not realizing you're not getting healthy attention or healthy type of love or unconditional love for that matter right these first 22 cards are the major arcana. Um, I don't know how I feel about the images, but I like the energy, if that makes sense, All right? Um, but I am going to use these for energy work, uh, particularly um, going through the, the new energy healing setup that I have. So I am going to be using these. But that's really what week six is. It's what do I put in place of what is now gone, right? So if you lost your job, you're going to desperately, and, and I said desperately, find a new one to fill that void. You took no time to do the healing work, if that makes sense. So you are looking for something out of desperation, which means that the moment that you get into it, you're going to desperately want out of it as well because it's not going to be what you thought it should be because you kind of have on rose-colored glasses here, if that makes sense, in this stage, right? This is the stage where rose-colored glasses are real. Um, so you'll find yourself with that. Like, you can make decisions, but you probably shouldn't make big ones. I think that's really, really how we're looking at it. And the truth of it is, you know what to do. Your conscience is like, this is after the hysteria. So your conscience is like, yo, we got to get back to life, right? So, and your, and your whole soul is like, hey, we need to get back to life. But your mind's like, nope, we're traumatized, right? So let me rephrase that because I said the wrong word. Your subconscious is like, your subconscious and soul area is like, yo, let's get this shit, right? Let's get back. Let's let's get it together. Let's reel this in. We got to keep moving. Your conscious mind, where the, the lower part of ourself or the, the ego sits, will go, 
no we were traumatized i'm gonna stay playing the victim because it's getting me some attention it's getting me a little bit of what i need but it ain't healthy it's not healthy um i personally do not like this stage <laughs> i'm not a fan of being pacified i'm not a fan of um too much attention i don't want too much attention um I'm a fan of let me work through it and when I need assistance, I reach out, if that makes sense. But when you're navigating grief, no matter what caused the grief, you're inadvertently gonna hit this stage and it's gonna feel like shit. It's gonna feel like shit. You're literally gonna feel like there's a whole last piece of you missing. Especially if you lost something like a soulmate or um, best friend or even a parent that you were um, highly connected with or if there even if just the relationship is damaged you could you can really fill this void the problem is we try to fill the void with shit that isn't necessarily good for us or we find ourselves running backwards to things that um, were part of our unhealed self if that makes sense or even um stuff that just wasn't good for us to begin with you're just trying to fill the void with something from familiar okay this is also a stage where people are likely to um become addicted to some some type of substance or um well we'll just say substance because um, we'll tie like um food addictions in there um drug addictions alcohol We'll tie it all in there because this is that phase where you're trying to find a familiar feeling to fill that void. And when you're doing that, you're doing whatever you can to kind of like limit your intuitive self from really coming back to life because it's going to tell you the truth. So this is the stage where you avoid the truth, unfortunately, right? That's the... That's the raw truth of it. I hate that. But um, sometimes our mind just needs to go numb. And just do stupid shit. Right? And then we kind of snap out of it and come back to life. Right? I hope y'all can see these. I really do. Um, I'm on the Zodiac now. In case you guys were wondering. But, uh... This, this is that. So I did get a question outside of the series and someone asked me what herbs or plants they can use to help with the chakras. And my new system is based off of that. It's based off of chakra, a chakra plant or herb and crystal. Okay, so I'm going to be using a combination of things uh, of a plant herb or and or crystal to assist the healing. Okay, and also animal. So because <laughs> uh, some people like to know what animal comes up for each chakra and I can it, it depends on the person what animal comes up and I'll let you know, I tend to let the person know. But I'm going to quickly go through the herbs all the way up until this current week which is week six okay so if you got your pen and paper handy or if you just want to save this video and remember listen guys i haven't been saying it but like share and sub subscribe i appreciate it I, I would love you forever if you did that <laughs> i probably should say it more often but um get your paper handy and i'm gonna go through these relatively quickly um, and, this, and remember, it's not limited to just this herb or plant. Um, I don't limit it to that herb or plant. However, it depends on the person what herb or plant will assist that part of them. Okay, so I'll give you the herb or plant. I'm not giving the crystals today. I'll probably give the crystals next week. Um, so I'm not going to give a... Um, a crystal day, but I'll give you the plant or herb with what it ties to in regards to the chakra if that helps you so get your pen and paper 
And if you're ready, I'm going to start with the Earth Star, which is below the root. Okay. The color of that is um, uh, black or like a really deep red, something like um, like a black garnet. Um, I have a black garnet. I do, I do, I do. And it was within reach. Okay. Something like a, a, a black garnet, if you guys can see that. Um, it's deep like that. Just so you guys know. Um, so, Earth Star. Rue. R-U-E. And that deals with all your, um, at least from my experience and my um, <laughs> knowledge of it, um, ancestral ties. So if you think of a tree of life, this is the, the roots part, okay? Um, so the earth star and the root are kind of like in that root area of it, but it the earth star is really like your ancestral. So um, when people ask me, um, you know, when you look at past lives, I have to go down into your earth star and then navigate past lives on uh, ancestral line and also on um, the soul line is up in the soul star. So I have to look at both <laughs> in case you guys are wondering when I look at Akashic records and whatnot, I'm looking at the soul star and the earth star to figure out what lines I need to um, heal or break off or whatever your guides tell me to do. So that's the earth star. Moving on to the root lemon balm and that has to do deal with nurturing the inner child okay so it's providing that salve that um you might have needed as a child um and, and have not received or it's removing the overabundance of that salve if you receive too much okay so um it just depends on if the uh the chakra is overactive or underactive. That determines what happens with that. Okay. Now we're on to the sacral. Blue lotus. And that ties into emotional intuition. So it's the um, sent, uh, clairsentient, like the... Um, what you feel when it comes to certain things. It's not your gut, because your gut lies. <laughs> it's, um, cause you have to remember your intuition, especially if you're a woman, it's coming from two places, your sacral and your third eye, right? One is physical intuition tied to emotions, which is the sacral, and the other one we're gonna go over, um, which is the third eye, right? Um, but we're talking about the sacral here. So it's the emotional intuition that's on the physical level. Okay. Solar plexus, tobacco. <laughs> tobacco. And that has to do with the, your energetic offering to yourself and the world or the people around you in your community. So, um, you, we either need to put out the tobacco or light it up. One of the two. Okay. Uh, that was the zodiac. We're now moving into moon phases. Uh, heart. Echinacea. Now, the spelling, <laughs> if you don't know how to spell echinacea, E C H. I-N-A-C-E-A, -E Echinacea. And that has to do with the destiny of the soul. So if you are trying to find your life purpose, it's going to be in that heart center. Now the, the throat, St. John's wart. Now, a lot of y'all, if you guys know your plants, herbs, y'all like, wait a minute, St. John's wort is a calming agent. Indeed it is. However, you know how you can put two negatives together to make a positive? There's that. And that's what Spirit told me. <laughs> so, um, this is all about radiant voice. It's about uh, raising the vibration of your voice. If you are not being heard, 
or lowering it to something that's a little bit more assertive versus aggressive if you're overactive. So that's where the St. John's work comes in. And now we're at the third eye. And that is motherwort. And that's all one word. Motherwort is one word. And that has to do with intuitive strength. Right? So if you're feeling empty, you ain't got no strength. But also understand that your third eye, it, if your solar plexus is good, your third eye is going to be good. That's really like in this grief phase. So if you've done the healing work in that week three, right, and you, you keep your energy level, your third eye work should be okay. And you should be able to navigate it a lot, a lot easier versus if your solar plexus was depleted. Now, if it's overactive, then yeah, we got to um, do what we got to do to bring that down. But for the most part, um, when you're navigating grief, shit's depleted. Okay, everything's underactive at this point. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of that. So um, if I'm, if, if you guys have any questions on those, let me know. Put it in the comments or um, in the chat box because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make this a premiere video. Um, you can message me. You can email me. All of my information will be in the description box. Um, you can, um, you know, just drop your questions because I know um, these er plant and herbs don't always resonate with everyone because there's no there's no set playbook <laughs> for everybody each person is different and they require different herbs and plants and that's one of the reasons why I do use certain tools inside of my healing work because everybody's different and I refuse to make like I thought about it and side note okay because y'all know me y'all know me squirrel um I thought about like, you know, you know, writing a little, you know, like a little booklet, a little PDF, you know, something for, but how can I generalize when we're, we're all different. We all require different things. We're all at different stages in our life. Sometimes we feel like we're in the same stage, but it's still different because you're a whole different like unit. So like, uh, I'm battling that. I really am. That's one of the reasons why I don't do like zodiac um readings because every leo is different every capricorn is different every cancer is different every virgo every uh pisces each one is different they're not all the same so i can't just go oh if you're a pisces here you go i can't do that so don't ask me to not going to um so like you know just kind of keep that in mind now if you want me to read your system just simply to help help you with some herbs or um apply crystals to them let me know i can do that right um i i certainly play with it as offering as a, a service because that is something that I do. I can see what animals are sitting with your chakras. I can see what crystals sitting there. And I can see what plant or herb is sitting there. But it's one of those things like, do I offer that? I don't know. But if you would like it, let me know. Okay? We're moving on to crystals. So next week, I'll tell you the crystals that go with all of the chakra chakras that we went through if that helps. This week, we only went through the herbs. <laughs> so back to <laughs> navigating grief. How do you move from a, a place of feeling empty? And the, the short answer is you simply move. The long answer is you need tools, okay? You need a whole ass accountability partner this is where an accountability partner would be great not necessarily a therapist but an accountability partner because teamwork makes the dream work okay and you'll want to eat like bluish purple foods right 
If you're not a fan of eggplant, don't eat it, but eat something else that's purple, you know, the grapes and shit, right? Um, you can eat blueberries, um, like, uh, what is it, purple, uh, radicchio or purple cabbage, that kind of stuff. You could do that, okay? The goal is to introduce that color back into your life because when you're navigating grief, it's depleted, okay? It's going to be depleted. So you can do that. You can journal. In any of these chakras, you can journal. But for the most part, when it comes to your third eye, you really want to be meditating. And you really want it to be a guided meditation, not like free form. And the reason I say that, okay, is because you're trying to wake your intuitive side up. And in order to do that, it has to have some guidance. So uh, guided meditation would absolutely work best for that. All right, that was Christos. So you can, you can do something like that. Other things you can do is you can use your cards, right? If you, have, if you read charms, if you do any type of divination, you can totally use those methods to help bring your third eye back into its fullness, right? What that does is it now moves that lower self, that ego part of ourselves, the, the false ego, okay? It moves it and says, hey, we're not missing shit. <laughs> I'm right here. We got everything we need. We, we might need that a few things but we have essentially everything that we need so it's kind of like a reverse psychology if that makes sense it's kind of like that sorry if my hand was in the way it was making it darker I, I apologize for that y'all you know, know I talk with my hands and shit um so you can do something like that when you're out in nature if you can spend about 20 minutes and I said what I said, 20 minutes near water, that will also help reset you, okay? It'll actually help your third eye and your sacral, because your sacral is, uh, the element for it is water. So it will actually help both. I believe these are plants, herbs. Um, so you could do that. You could totally do that wearing certain colors so if your third eye is overactive meaning like you getting some crazy shit coming down and it's not making sense um and it's just being hella rude you want to wear the op wear or eat the opposite color on the, the color wheel okay and you're like oh what color is that orange <laughs> Right? So, like, think about it. It's like orange or yellow. I'll say it that way. Think about it in terms of if you bleached your hair, if you ever bleached your hair, and you need to get that brassiness out, what color shampoo do you put on? Right? You just look at it that way. So, you'll want to use the opposite color. If it's the heart, you use um, pink. Right? That's why the heart chakra is known for green and pink. You just use the pink side if you need to um, comb it, which is typically like rose quartz or something like that. You can totally do that. So those are things you can do to help, you know, balance out that, that void, that emptiness, and get yourself right, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. The other side of it, too, and I'm in all, in all seriousness, if you're dealing with grief in the sense that you've lost something, okay, you have to you have to find some sort of lesson in it and the blessing, okay? Um, people go, how can you find a blessing in losing somebody or in losing a job? How stressed out were you at that job? How stressed out were you in that relationship? 
right? You have to look at the pros and cons of the whole experience. And in that third eye, a lot of times we're trying to avoid seeing whatever, seeing the lesson and whatever occurred. And not everything has a lesson, but everything has a lesson, whether regardless of we need the lesson or not. There's always some little lesson slash blessing in every situation, in every traumatic experience. We might not see it right away, but there's something that's always there. So here is where you face yourself. Here is where you face yourself and say, I need to practice self-forgiveness. Because that void is actually just you avoiding you. That's it. You're trying to pull shit from outside in. And really, you need to work inside and practice some self-forgiveness, right? Um, and understand that, like, some shit's out of your control, right? But you can forgive yourself for the way you might have handled the situation, right? Because you're in charge of your, your reaction and your responses, right? You can forgive yourself for that. You can learn from that, right? You can say, hmm, in the future, if I ever sent some bullshit like this happening again, I can do this, that, and the third. Guess what? You've learned something from it, right? And this isn't for you to be walking around blaming yourself either. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please. Um, I, have, I, have, I have a number of clients that will do that, and I just want to shake the shit out of them. No one's saying you need to blame yourself. But you don't need to blame everybody else either. The event occurred because of some type of action that took place. However, in the aftermath, you have to look at it and go, you know what? There is a silver lining in this, right? And and I get a lot of people ask me, they're like, how is there a silver lining in you losing your, your best friend and your whole world changing? The silver lining? we would have stayed in that same circle for the rest of our lives. We would have been, he would, he would have been miserable, right? For the rest of his life. Had things hadn't changed, right? His soul is now free. That's the blessing, right? For me, yeah, my whole life changed. And yeah, I lost the physical part of my best friend. However, I gained so much. I gained so much. I've made new friends. I've reconnected with true friends, right? I've learned a lot, but I also had to forgive myself for the way that I handled part of that situation, part of that trauma, right? That takes time. It takes having patience with yourself and nobody wants fucking patience with themselves, right? Because why would we do that? We don't have patience with others, right? Why would we have it for ourselves? It starts there. How much patience you, patience you have for yourself is what you're going to exude for someone else. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go and tolerate bullshit from anybody. I'm not saying that, right? What I'm saying is uh, you, you can practice unconditional love without taking on unconditional bullshit. That's all I'm saying. What I'm also saying is self-forgiveness helps set healthier boundaries, and when your third eye is fucked up and you're sitting in this emptiness stage and you're feeling all vulnerable, you ain't got no fucking boundaries. Anybody can walk in and try to take control. And if you're paying attention to yourself, your body might react a certain way. You might start fighting, right? Because you don't have any peace, right? You might get to that new job and go, this shit feel like the last one. Right? So now you're repeating a mistake. Let's not do that. Let's do better. Let's be better. Right? So with all of that, right? With all of this information and understanding that navigating grief is going to be different for everybody. This is just kind of like some, uh, I can generalize these points. I can't generalize every person. These are steps you're going to go through. Are there many more steps? Of course. But there's little steps in between these steps, right? These are just the main ones. Understand that your experience is going to be different from somebody else's. But 
when you have a community in which you can discuss what's going on with you and you get some constructive feedback, not criticism, because ain't nobody looking to be criticized for the shit we going through. Constructive criticism, I mean, constructive feedback, right? When you receive that, navigating grief becomes easier. You can um, gain a, a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You, you, a little bit more inner beauty, right? Because you, you know how to fuck with yourself. You get what I'm saying? And can't nobody do it like you because you know you, right? So when you understand the, the cycle that you're moving through and you get some constructive feedback, shit you can actually work with, with. even if you have to file it for a little bit and then you can pull it back out, you can fuck with yourself on a better level. You can have better boundaries, right? You don't have to shut people out. You don't have to try to control people around you because you don't like how they're making you feel and so on and so forth. You don't have to belittle yourself either, right? You don't have to hide in the shadows. You can be you authentically when you understand the journey, the the, the grief journey that's, that you're on, right? So I hope that made sense. <laughs> I hope that made sense. And I hope y'all like these cards. Those were the chakras. That was the last of it. And I'm going to be using this to do healing work on people. So with that being said, y'all, I have listed my um, updated services. And now they're set up uh, by chakra, right? And also, if you want the whole package, that is there as well, okay? Um, if you are on Instagram and you um, go into my profile, you'll be able to find it. If you want to order it via email, let me know. I can send you an invoice. Um, and then I also have the Sassafras, Cypress, and Indigo um, energy work as well, which I've talked about. But when it comes to the, from the Earth Star to the Third Eye, where we are now, the bulk of your work sits between the heart and the third eye the heart the throat and the third eye you can a lot of times we can easily get our body together that's you know the physical side of it but getting that mental right that intuitive side of us together right that soul part of us together our spirit body that takes a lot more guts than we think it takes a lot more determination courage you name it and i applaud all of y'all for taking the journey because you don't have to right you can sit where you were right you didn't have to grow you didn't have to heal but i'm i'm applauding you because you did right i'm not gonna clap right now because then y'all can't fucking hear me talk but like kudos to y'all <laughs> kudos right because you took this leap, right? Grief can try to break you. That's why it's, you know, especially if it's a heavy uh, part of grief and like if you lose a person. Like for me, you know, my last favorite person passed away last year. I, th th you have to get to that year and a half mark. That's what I've noticed. To get out of that broken heart phase. And that's why the heart you know, the heart center is important to do healing work in because you can die from a broken heart, right? Especially like there are some people who lose a job that they really loved and they they might unalive themselves. And that's is unfortunate, but that happens, right? It's getting through that broken heart phase, right? And not trying to fill the void or like replace it. No, you need to move forward understanding that you can set better and healthier boundaries and that you're not empty. You're, you're not, you don't have to be as vulnerable as you're feeling, right? No one can t have control over you unless you give it to them as well. So with that being said, <laughs> I pray every day for all of y'all, whoever watches this video, that 
whatever you need come to you quickly. That you're abundant, that you're prosperous, that you're healing, that you find whatever you need swiftly and wholly, right? I hope y'all stay hydrated, that you're eating and not just drinking coffee, right? And not just snacking either. You need a whole fucking meal. I don't know who need to hear that, but you need a whole fucking meal. Um, and I, I pray that you're taking care of yourself and your family, right? And I most certainly, most certainly wish you all the brightest of blessings. Bye.